Hey guys, I just posted a new video for you this morning on what we talked about last night about feeling numb. So just checking it. I have about 30 minutes that we can chat. Hey there. Um, so I just posted a video for you on feeling numb because that's what we talked about last night. And I kind of shared with you what worked for me. There is, of course, many, many things. Hey, um, tell me what your name is, where you're from what you want to chat about. I have only about half an hour today. I don't know if I can do the full hour live stream like I usually do tonight because it's Sunday and I'm probably going to be watching a movie with my boyfriend, but I just posted a video for you on numbness. So tell me what you think of it. Go comment. Hey, Faisal. Do I say it? Is it Faisal or Faisal from Saudi Arabia? Welcome. I'm so happy you found me. So comment and tell me what you think or um, basically numbness is one of those protection mechanisms, just the same as amnesia. If you think about it, when something terrible happens to you, if you can't process it, you block it. So you block it in your memory, in your mind, but you also block it in your, in your body. So your body can have flashes. Those of you who have been through, um, thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm happy my videos are helpful. So your mind blocks it so you don't remember, but your body blocks it too. So those of you who have PTSD, raise your hand. Uh, when we have these flashes or when something triggers us and we just can't bloody understand why, you know, you smell a certain smell or somebody leans into you and whispers and you just get on total red alert. Hey there, I'm sorry if you have PTSD. Yeah, I primarily right now, I hardly ever ever get triggered because I'm pretty much in the place where I almost fully healed, but I still do. So the reason why we get that is because we block what our bodies feel. Like literally, we just get numb. It's much easier. So we get numb in the head and numb in the body. Does it make sense? You get numb in the head so you don't remember anything. You just forget it all. You don't remember shit. You just like talk to your friends and they're like, yeah, my childhood was like this and I went to my aunt and for Christmas I did this and you're like, huh? I don't remember anything. Why is it that I don't remember anything? Or people tell you like, well, I feel upset or, you know, like the biggest thing for me would be somebody would say, I'm so upset right now. And I'm like, how does that feel? Like, I don't really know how to be upset. Like, seriously, I would just be a wall, right? Um... Katharina, hey Katharina, thank you so much. <laughs> you love my hair. Okay, you guys, so this is what happens when I go to bed with my hair wet and I just wake up and it does this poofy. <laughs> it's a, uh, as the days go by, I kind of pin it back, but this is the, this is the original state of my hair being clean in the morning and I don't have any pins. My boyfriend looked at me, he's like, wow, you look poofy today. I'm like, yeah, I do. Uh, and I also haven't been outside yet. The Seattle is really, um, the air, there's a lot of moisture in the air. And once I get out, it curls up more. You know, it's not so fluffy. Uh, William says, your hair reminds me of Sarah Polson. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I'm probably living under a rock. I don't know who Sarah Polson is. I'll have to go look. So anyway, back to, um, back to our topic on the head and the mind. So if you feel like you're a weirdo, you are not. If you feel like you're crazy, you are not. If you feel like somehow you're different and alone, you are not. Most of us abuse survivors. Yep, I live in Seattle. Are you in Seattle too, Sammy? Uh, most of us abuse survivors just completely block both things, the brain and the mind, right? So we block shit that happened in the head and then we block what we feel in the body. It is really, oh, she's an actor. Oh, American Horror Story. I haven't seen that. Oh, Ratchet. Have you guys seen it? I haven't. I'm, uh, I'm watching Criminal, Criminal Minds right now. Um, yeah, I'm so happy, Miss, what is it? Miss Wiss, uh, whatever your name is. Thank you for being here. I'm really honored. I really, really hope I can help you guys. Because when I was going through this shit, I was alone. Um... I didn't have money to do therapy. I didn't have medical insurance. I was a single mom, unemployed, and I had to survive somehow. So I came up with all of these hacks. I'm, be I'm a nerd. Nerds, raise your hands. I basically nerded out on the terrible thing of going through childhood sexual abuse and what to do about it because 
there was no help. So I read books like nuts and I would create these systems for myself to try to, you know, somehow figure it out. Yep. Sorry, Miss Swiss. Here. Yep. Yeah. Come to my lives. I, I love it that you guys can make it. I'm not sure when I do them, so I can't tell you exactly, but most work days I'm here around 9.30 to 10 a.m. Pacific time and about 9 to 10 p.m. Uh, Pacific time in the evening. And then the evening, if you come to my evening lives, um, we'll talk about what kind of video you want me to make tomorrow. So today I talked about numbness. Oh, hey, I love Oregon. I love Portland. I haven't been there in a long time, but I fucking love it. So, um, so yesterday, last night, the topic came up about numbness. And so I made you a video today about numbness. So tell me, tell me what I also went through CSA and your videos really help. I'm so sorry to those of you who went through this stuff. I'm so sorry. And fuck your abusers. Let's heal together. Okay. The best revenge we can get guys is to be so fucking happy. They've never been so happy. And that is our best revenge. Okay. That's what we're here for is to get better. Uh, how did I move to America? That's, <laughs> that's a good question. So I got lucky. My ex-husband now we're still friends, but we're divorced. He got a job here in Seattle and um, he was a student. And back then a lot of people were just basically moved over to America, like to be the working force here, computer engineers, because you know, that was before the American Union stepped up and said, Hey guys, why aren't you hiring Americans? So a lot of like cool pockets of students from well, recent graduates, not students from Russia, China, India, you know, there was like these immigration waves. And so uh, when I met my ex-husband, I had no idea that he actually did computer programming. I didn't even know what the hell that was. I'm actually an architect by education. I studied architecture. So we fell in love and then moved in together and we just both decided to kind of run away, move away as far as possible. So it was a lucky coincidence that he was a smart cookie and he got that job. So he quickly proposed to me so we could get married. I had my daughter from my previous marriage. She was four because I was a teen mom. So I became pregnant. I ran away from home when I was 17, immediately got pregnant, which a lot of us uh, childhood sexual abuse survivors, you know, right? We offer our body for sex. Like, I don't care for my body. Here, you, you can do anything you want with it. Here's a piece of wood, like do anything, right? And so then we get pregnant because when you're a kid and you're being raped or abused, like you don't get pregnant, right? You don't have your period. Let's not go into details because that might be triggering. But then you do. And it, it was to me, it was such a surprise. I was like, oh, interesting. It's like, it's like a completely different universe. And so I became a mom at 18 and I married my high school boyfriend. I mean, there was a high school kid that we had a kid together. And of course it didn't work out. So we were together for four years. I divorced him. And then I met my second ex-husband, had a son with him. And now I'm with my partner who's American. If we've been together for 10 years, he's also a childhood sexual abuse survivor. And that is why we're so happy because we get each other. Like he is a man, right? But he also sometimes freezes at my touch because I touch him in such a way that triggers a panic attack in him or it's, it's, um, he, uh, and he's been through a lot. Like he was in the military. So he's seen a lot of stuff where he has PTSD, has ringing in his ears. And, you know, we're, so because of that, because he understands me, I understand him. We're really happy. And if you're lucky like me, that you could have a partner, find a partner in life like me, but you know what? The only reason that I found him is I began healing already when we met because I tried to run away from him three times because it was too good to be true. I was so used to being abused. I'm like, I can't have someone who loves me. You must hate me. You must have a hidden agenda. So it wasn't, it was because I became open and I went against my instinct where my instinct, which was wrong in my head was like, run, he's going to do something to you. It can't be true. You know, I'm so happy I didn't. But because before that, my husbands were the images of my father, right? We pick people based on our abusers. Um, let's see. How do you deal with family members who weren't the abuser but still want a relationship with them? So, uh, uh, Can you be more specific? Uh, um, they're not abusers, but what? How, how did you? My hair looks super. Thank you. So I woke up this morning. I went... Um, I wash my hair and I go to bed with wet hair. Like I, I never do any styling or any, I haven't blown dried my hair in 
years or decades. And then I wake up and it kind of does its own thing. Like some days it goes this way, sometimes that way. Sometimes it doesn't look really good, so I pin it. I mean, it doesn't look even, but this morning it was kind of like, oh, okay, it's kind of fun. So I did, I'm like a poodle, you know, with my hair. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's funny. So, ah, uh, anyway, let's see. I became a cam girl at 19, they quit only at 30. Oof. Yeah, so, you know, this is the biggest tragedy of being a childhood sexual abuse survivor. Uh, and to those of you who are telling me, hey, you're really pretty. You know, I hated being pretty. Like, I, because I was a magnet for predators and because of my behavioral patterns, I attracted predators because I didn't know how to create boundaries. So I was like, come and take. They took. So for many years, I tried to make myself look ugly. And I think at one of the lives here, I showed you my picture 10 years ago. I would cut my hair really short and I had this look like, even though I did use makeup too, you know, right now I'm barely using makeup. I only have the, the um, you know, I oh, what's it called? Mascara. Oh my God, I blinked out for a second right now. It, so I, I would do my best to try to look ugly, dress ugly, look ugly. Uh, I also, my frame is really thin. Like I never was able to put on a lot of weight. So I worked really hard and I put on extra 10 pounds and then extra 20 pounds on my frame to just look shapeless and I'm kind of, I have a very athletic body. So like no waist, not much boobs, asses square, you know, kind of like, like a rectangle. So when I'm really thin, it looks good. Like I love doing ballet, but when I start adding weight on it, I look like this shapeless, you know, rectangle. And that is what I did. I was like, don't touch me. Like my fat on my body was a way of protecting myself. And by the way, for many of us who are struggling with food, because I struggled with food a lot, I told you I would binge and I would gain weight or then I would starve myself and I would lose weight. I never went as far as, um, you know, throwing up on purpose, uh, but I was skirting all kinds of disorders because I would violate my body as my body was violated. So yeah, you wear big clothes. Yeah, you know what I would wear? I would wear like these... Uh, um, Oh my God, what are they called? Oh, I'm blanking on English, not jeans, oh, overalls. So I would wear overalls and I would wear like these shirts or sweatshirts and I would make them look shapeless. Actually right now, hi, <laughs> right now I mostly wear athletic stuff, stuff that's stretchy, but it's pretty feminine. I mean, it's, it's um, you know, it's, it's cute. Like I'm wearing pink, for example. I bought so many clothes in pink color because I could never allow myself to be a girl. And I hate it in our society. We equate pink with female gender. We can talk about all that stuff. So it was, it was outside of it. It was just me when I was a little girl that I wanted to feel girly. And to me, that was pink. And so I have a lot of pink clothes that I bought. Pink tutus because I wanted to be a ballerina. And I'm doing them now, wearing them now. And I'm like in my 40s. So sometimes it looks ridiculous. And I don't give a fuck because I'm having fun being a girl again, you know? that I never could have that when I was little. Um, is it okay to want to change your whole appearance? Yes. I had a plastic surgery. I did a nose job. The only reason I was lucky enough to have money for it. A lot of you are saying, well, you know, maybe you're a lucky bitch. Like you had money to do that. Trust me. I was broke most of my life. I'm still broke right now. I just started making money last year because I'm a full-time writer. I was writing for 10 years. But I started my startup. I started a safe community, basically what we're doing here, but it's a paid membership community where you come in and we help, we teach each other to heal through storytelling, through writing. So you come in and you would teach, you would share, uh, basically you would turn all that negativity into positivity and share with other people how you overcame it and we help each other. So, oh my God, and I just lost my train of thought, fuck. You guys have seen me disassociate before on live. I completely lost it. Something, I was leading it up to something and I forgot. So anyway, so Magical Realism says, growing up chubby, I hate how everyone made me believe I should only dress how society want me to. Yeah, I'm so sorry. And by the way, if you feel like, you know, you're fat or you're thin or you're chubby or you're not, all of that is bullshit. It's all connected to your head. Like anybody who's telling you, oh, you should, you know, you should eat or you should stop eating or whatever. It's 
intrinsically linked to, linked to how you feel. So if for some reason you feel like you're eating a lot and you have too much weight in your body, I can guarantee you that it is a protection mechanism. It was for me. It's for many of us. And I hated that our body image in our society is about what's on the surface. None of us want to dig up where is it coming from. To me, eating was comfort. I mean, here, for example, I just because of my constitution, I was never able to put on more than 20 extra pounds. I just, you know, I, my metabolism, whatever it is, I don't know. It didn't matter how much I ate. I just never ballooned. But some of us do, you know, it, it's, it's very individual. But I did it on purpose because my family was so dysfunctional. There were always fights physical fights, verbal fights, screaming. It was nasty. It was dirty in the apartment where I grew up. So get this. The only time when people were sane, like normal, is when they sat down and we had a meal together. And so all my happy memories are connected to food. Or my grandmother would give me uh, like 20 kopecks in Russia. I'm from Russia, so it's like a quarter. And for 20 kopecks, I could go and buy ice cream. So I would run from school, you know, like when we had breaks between periods. I would go and I'd buy myself ice cream. And I'm still, ice cream is my, I would die for ice cream. Like, <laughs> it's the love of my life. You know, when I eat ice cream, I'm so happy. So, so food is comfort. So I ate, I ate until it hurt. And I ate more and I ate more and I ate because it made me feel good. It was comfort for my inner child. It took me a long time. Guys, I sometimes still binge on the weekends. It fluctuates. I'm getting much better. But it's just a source of comfort for me. You know, or like, for example, my dad bought me sweets. So um, do you miss Russia sometimes? Oh, what's my favorite ice cream flavor? So I love ice cream that's with berries. So I love, um, there's this company locally here. It's called Whidbey Island Ice Cream. And they have like a triple berry. That is one of my favorite flavors. So I like, you know, strawberry or blueberry or anything with berries. Um, hold on. There's something about Russia. Uh, do you miss Russia sometimes? So, oh, you know, I I miss some people and some streets and memories connected to it. But every time I go back, it's a trigger. And every time I come back, it takes me two weeks to get out of this funk so I don't like going back there. I go only only every three to four years. The whole place is like a trigger, right? It, it's filled with memories of, you know, I've seen a man killed. I was followed and by a man with an intention to rob me and rape me. Um, several members of my family were killed. You know, one of them was stabbed 40 times, knife wounds in his apartment, chased around. There's blood all over the walls. Case never solved. Another person was stabbed for in the store for a bottle of vodka. I mean, the, I just the amount of violence that I've seen. Those of you from big cities, raise a hand here. If you grew up in the slum, like in the poor, you know, port of the in the poor part of the town, right here. I'm from Moscow. Like slum, it's not slums, but it's like um, it's like on the on the on the outskirts of the city or like at the edge of the city where all the gangs were, where all the, the murder was happening. I maybe compare it to New York, I don't know. That's where I'm coming from, or Chicago, you know, drive throughs and shootings. Yeah. All right, right here. So when you grow up with this violence around you, you just you either learn how to survive or, or, or you're fucked. You're toast. Like I still remember uh, I was walking my dog. I left the apartment. I come back and like these black cars come up and like these guys fall out. Like in the movies, you know, they're all wearing black coats and, 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 and caps. And I walk into the, in Russia, we have this apartment buildings. I walk in with my dog and then I go, we lived on the second floor. The dog starts barking and running downstairs. I come down and I see these guys beating a guy. Like they beat him to death essentially. So he own the money or something. I don't know. And I was probably the last person he saw who could help him. And this one of the guys, you know, when I was leaving with the dog and they were walking in, they're like, aren't you afraid to walk so late with the dog? It was like 10 p.m. or something. And I'm like, afraid of you? Huh? You know, it. I mean, there was some instinct in me how to survive. So it's like, never show these guys fear, right? I don't know why I said that because 
It was 20 guys in black coats. Big guys, you know, and I'm just like this little girl. So, so then when I came back, this guy, he touches my shoulder and he's like, honey, can you please make your dog shut up and can you go home? And I was like, yes. And I went home. I never called police. I had a baby. I was a young mom back then, right? I was 18, a mom. And I would walk the carriage with my daughter in the street and this, the car would go by slowly, this black car. And they would nod at me like, good girl. You didn't go to police, you know? And I'm like, this is the stuff that I grew up with. So you can guys relate, right? Those of you from big cities with that you've seen shit blown up, you had friends killed, you had, you know, you 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 come from poverty, from violence, from from real life, and I'm, I had a, a guilt, uh, the survivor guilt. Those of you immigrants to us here, raise your hand. Most of us who come from poor countries or from background like mine, we feel survival guilt. It's like, well. How is it that I was lucky enough to escape? And they're all still back there. <laughs> Good girl, Arusha, Divichka. Um, Hold on. There's been so much, so many comments. Let me just scroll back up a little. Uh, blah, blah. Same home state. Yep, yep. Berlin. I love you. Sprinkles on my ice cream. Yay. I love uh, whipped cream on my ice cream. Chicago. Berlin. Yeah, I used to live in Berlin. I lived in Berlin for four years in Karlshorst. Where, where are you from in Berlin? Uh, my parents grew up in Russia at around the same time. Yeah, Brooklyn projects. Hey, sister. Yep, yep. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, there's been a lot. Where, where else? Anybody else from a big city with lots of crime? Is your oldest daughter in the USA? Snitches, got stitches. Uh, yeah, both of my kids are here. My... Uh, my daughter is 26 now. My son is 17. He's almost, he's going to be 18 this summer. Always lived in small towns, but ghettos. Yes. Violence, poverty, abuse, uh, alcoholics. We didn't have much drugs in Russia simply because there was no drugs being imported into the country. So the drug of the country was vodka, alcohol. And my my uh, my uh, in laws like my uh, father in law died of the cirrhosis of liver, you know, being an alcoholic. And my step grandfather who abused me, he was uh, he was in prison. He was a butcher. He was an alcoholic. Uh, uh, I mean, it's just like <laughs> it's not pretty at all. I, I get this from people. They go, but you look so nice and so happy and so cute. Like there is no way you could come from this. I'm like. You don't want to know. Like, seriously, if I were to tell you the stories that I know, like here, for example, there is a story of someone and I cannot speak about it because these are my friends, my dear friends, and they made me swear not to tell anyone of the shame and the guilt and the embarrassment comes from sexual abuse. And I'm maybe that's why so many of you send me your stories and direct messages is because I'm like a grave. You tell it to me and I never tell anyone. Right, so in this book that I wrote, it's called Irkadura. This is kind of like my story of being homeless teen mom. It's a novel, but I wrote every single story in here is true. It happened to someone, not necessarily to me, but it's someone who told me their story. And I can't t- tell it to the world because I promised them not to. So, oh, you just ordered it. Thank you. Um, because it has to be talked about to stop the abuse. So there's this one story that is based off of a friend whom I know. He was a boy. He was coming home from school and he was raped by six men. It was so violent that he crawled home. He nearly died. He is a successful businessman right now with a family, with children. He will not talk about it. And I talk about it here as a way of fictionalizing it because that is the horrible shit that nobody knows about that gets covered up. I don't know how he survived. And he made me swear not to talk about it, not to tell his name or never. So I'm mentioning it to you anonymously. Another person that I know has been seduced and sexually abused, meaning not necessarily penetration, but other means by he's a man. And that other man who seduced him was a, uh, uh, how to tell you this without revealing it, a very well-known personality in the art, right? 
like I could go and kill his career right now because he would go look for boys in schools, 12, 13, and then he would promise them, that was back in Russia, oh, I'll take you to America. You'll go to America, I'll make you a star. And then he'll, you know, he'll lure them into the apartment and then have sex with them. So again, where can I talk about it? Here, right? So we just gotta break the silence. So any of you who are brave enough, please join me. I'm building a community right now for safe storytelling. It's called Emberville, where we teach each other, we help each other um, get over this this stuff. So we basically, you share how you came over yours and we write stories about it. They're fictionalized. That's why this is safe, okay? This is fiction. Like, there's no real names. There's no, uh, I'm, I'm warning you, saying I need this book. It might trigger you, just... Just be very, very sure that you're okay reading it. It's pretty dark. Um, but when I was uh, 15, when I was 16 in Russia, if any of you know Russian history, the Soviet Union collapsed. We had shootings on the street and I was running in those streets back then. Like we had snipers on the top of the buildings. The name of the book is Irkadura. Here, let me show you. This is better maybe. You can go and find it on Amazon or you can get it on my... Uh, if you buy it on my website, the money will go directly to me, but it's a little more expensive, but I'll sign it for you and, you know, I'll get really famous. You'll sell it for big bucks on eBay <laughs> or something. Um, but if you buy it on Amazon, it's cheaper. Or if you have no money at all, if you're broke, you can download the ebook for free on my site. And I'm probably crazy to do that, but I believe that sometimes you just need a story and, you know, I know I trust you in the future. You know, you'll have gold falling on your ears out of the sky and, and, and you'll send me something. Um, my other book that's really dark that I just published, took me five years to write, is Tube. This one is about sexual abuse in families. This was about me confronting my father because I confronted my father about 10 years ago. He admitted to his abuse and then he cut me out of... Uh, <laughs> did you know any of the bamji? <laughs> uh, this, this book is Irkadura. Can somebody type it up for uh, Y Lee Twenty? Um, yeah, I mean, I knew there were homeless people. Again, they were not mm, homeless in Russia back then. Were different from homeless in the U.S. So I would say the the problem with homeless in Russia was it was a lot of it was a lot of people who have lost their livelihood because overnight the ruble collapsed and all of these people had their savings, their life savings for over 30 years lost everything. They literally became homeless because of that. It was a tragedy. Oh, closer to take a screenshot? Yes, yes. If any of you take need to take a screenshot, go ahead. Here. Is this better? Oh, it's closer. Is this good? Yeah, go ahead and take a screenshot. Um, or here... Um, what this probably help is the um, the book the book in my name. Got it? Okay. Hold on. There's something else about a book. Um, uh, which book has most of your fictionalized abuse stories? Oh, hold on. Oof, F uh, abuse stories. You know they're all different. Oh, this. Well, this one has. Uh, every single character in here and their story is based on someone's abuse story. So this is probably the best one. Uh, I trust you, Peachy Pink. I trust you. Totally. There is a donate button on my website, kaseniansky.com. If you ever come into riches, donate something. If not, don't worry about it. Just give love to the world. Turn around and give to somebody else. I'm giving to you because right now I can. I was in the place when I was broke myself, so I get you. Do you have a favorite magical realism book? Oh my God. Yeah, you know, I, well, hmm, that's a tough question. I really loved Neil Gaiman's Neverwhere, but probably love Coraline better, which, you know, is considered kind of like a kid's book, but I love Neil Gaiman stuff. And I, I was lucky enough to meet him and um, his wife, Amanda Palmer, stopped by at my house when she was giving a tour of her book, The Art of Asking. So I love them both to death. Uh, magical, favorite magical realism. I'll have to think about that because kind of my book loves switch and change.
that's the first one popped into my brain Coraline yeah a lot of people told me that this book is like Coraline if any of you are Neil Gaiman fans people tell me that this is kind of like Coraline ish kind of like um how to use in solitude is is wonderful have you ever watched the children of Leningradsky nope no is that a good movie if it is tell me yeah this is this is about a rose garden that eats people and it has a girl and a talking dog and they save all the people from it but the reality of this book is about a girl who's 12 years old who's turning 13 she is neglected by her parents so if you want to read about neglect is this one and she has ADD ADHD and PTSD and dissociative disorder so this is kind of like with me as an adolescent uh, but this is also a really fun book so it's safe for kids eight and older to read if you want to this is my bestseller I, I literally wrote it in like six months and you know like this book took me five years to write and it doesn't sell as well as this one because this one is fun oh Kafka on the shore is cool I, I, I like Haruki Murakami I love his stuff because it's so fucking weird I love it um uh, I want to watch the Norwegian wood the movie oh wait what time is it okay oh <laughs> I, I'll have to run because I have to I have my chicken roasting and I'm gonna eat it for lunch do you have tips for people who want to start writing yeah so first of all uh, go if you guys can go follow my community account here visit Emberville it's in my uh, bio because once we hit a thousand followers in that account I'm gonna give live classes right now we're teaching each other classes in my community it's called Emberville that's my startup that's why I'm not really making much money right now because I'm putting all all of my effort into a startup so to begin what I would say is pick the worst thing here's here's my goodbye message to you oh and wait two things in comments tell me what you want me to make the video about tomorrow because I don't think I'll go live again later tonight so first so pick one thing that you never told anyone about like your worst nightmare your worst you know story and then write it down but write it down change your name so write it down in third person like let's say your name is chloe so you would say you wouldn't say i did this you would say chloe did this but you change your name from chloe to let's say elizabeth and you would say elizabeth did this and so and so did this to her this is how you begin writing so if you can do every day about 20 minutes of that and if you write that whoever you ask that question please write send me an email go to emberville.com there's a comment uh, there's like a contact form send me your story and I'll read it and I'll tell you how keep how to keep going hold on there's been a lovely hearing from you all oh, yes I'm gonna write my story like you said yes please send me the story I'm not flooded with stories yet so I'll try my best to read it and I do read all of it just might take me a good uh, a whole time but for tomorrow what do you guys want me to make a video about tomorrow topic how to forgive okay so we got one vote how to forgive you also asked yesterday how to stop the cycle of abuse with your children uh, how to forgive so go ahead and flood me with messages everybody type what you want me to make a video about tomorrow it can be just one word you know like forgiveness oh how to confront your abuser whoa that's a big one because i've done that uh, how to confront your abuser i think you win i think i'll do that one hang on hang on what was your name how to confront your abuser airy berry yeah thank you that's fantastic change of appearance okay forgiveness healing inner child okay what to do when family keeps contact with the abuser how to overcome anger and rage confident okay hang on anger and rage so uh tell me if i'm hearing this correctly how to not care about your abusive family yeah i'll do a video how not to give any flying fox i'll do something like that anger all right so i'm seeing three trends and don't worry if i don't pick this theme for this video I'm posting a new video every day so I'll get to it so how to forgive that's one how to overcome or how to deal with feelings of anger and rage that's two and how to confront your abuser that's three did I get the three ones I think what I'll do is probably how to confront your abuser yeah yay nay how to confront abuser forgiveness and anger and rage I made it you made it Shimmy but I'm leaving already like I'm gonna go and eat and then I have a walk with my friend 
Uh, I might go live in a little bit. Anyone want to make a GC? What's a GC? Yeah, okay. What time? Oof. One more time for tomorrow's video. Uh, how to confront your abuser, choice number one. How to forgive, choice number two. And um, anger, how to deal with anger and rage. Is that correct? Oh, a group chat. Oh, I, yeah, I'm a, new, I'm a TikTok newbie. Yeah, can you do group chats here? That'd be cool. Yes, please, guys, stay. Please talk to each other. Please tell each other that you support each other. Okay, confront abuser. I mean, it takes a lot of courage to do that. All right, so are you guys cool for me to make tomorrow a video on how to confront your abuser? Yay or nay? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Uh, how to confront the abuser? Okay, I'll, um, I'll make a video on that. Okay, cool. And then I'll also make a video on forgiveness. What time tomorrow? I usually make it in the morning around 8.30. And then I go live around 9.30 to 10 a.m. Pacific time. So I'll, I'll be there. And then I'm going to go live in the evening during work days. I do 9 to 10 p.m. But today is Sunday and I might watch a movie with my boyfriend. So I might not go on live later tonight. I love you all. Okay. So here's your homework. Love yourself today can you please do something for yourself today that you haven't done in years like one thing maybe it's crazy silly i don't know like melt the chocolate and put your finger in it and smear it all over your mouth and lick it up something crazy like that but please do it for yourself okay i love you yeah my hair loves you too. <laughs> i'll see you i'll see you tomorrow maybe i'll go on another life later tonight i don't know and tell me in comments in the new video that I posted about how the three things to do to not feel numb, if it was helpful or not. Ask me any questions in there and I'll comment or ask me questions in Q&A. But if you want me to just text back to you, then better to do it in the video because Q&A only gives me an option to make you a video as an answer. Sometimes I don't, you know, I sometimes I, I, I can't answer them all. So I love you, I love you, I love you. But most of all, love yourself. Okay. I love you. Bye.